In this video, I'll show you some of the ratios that are helpful for understanding credit, as well as how to calculate the APR uh, and cost of credit. So here we have some of the general rules of our credit capacity. Recall that you learned about the debt payments to income ratio in your Learn Smart chapter. So in this formula, we take our monthly debt payments and we will divide it by our net monthly income. So this is the uh, income you take home. Note that the consumer credit payments should not exceed 20% of your income, and that does not include your house payment, which is considered a long-term liability. Uh, in other words, most house payments are on a mortgage of, let's say, 15 to 30 years. Now, the other ratio you should be aware of is the debt to equity ratio, and that's going to compare how much debt you have to your net worth. So that's why in the formula here you see you'll take your total liabilities and divide it by your net worth. Again, uh, note that the net worth excludes your home value and your ratio should be less than one. Suppose Sam's monthly debt payments, not including his mortgage, are $825. His monthly net income is 2425 he has total liabilities of 9,400, and his net worth, not including his home, is 24,750. So to calculate the debt payments to income ratio, so we'll take our monthly debt payments of 825 and divide it by our net monthly income of 2425. That should give us 34%. For our debt to equity ratio, we'll take the 9,400, which is our total liabilities, and we'll divide that by our net worth of 24,750, and that'll give us 38%. So recall, your debt to equity ratio should be less than one. If your debt roughly equals your net worth, or one, then you've probably reached the upper limit of your debt obligations. So this 38% here, when we write it as a decimal, it's 0.38, which is less than one. Now for the cost of credit. So with a finance charge, this is the total dollar amount you pay to use credit. It'll include interest costs and sometimes other costs like service charges, insurance premiums, or appraisal fees. The annual percentage rate is the percentage cost or relative cost of credit on a yearly basis. Remember that A is for annual, so we're thinking yearly. Now, this is the key to comparing costs, regardless of the amount of credit or how much time you have to repay it. Let's look at an example. Kaylee is borrowing $400 for three years and making monthly payments. Her total finance charge for the entire period is $54. How much is her APR? So here is the formula for the APR, where R represents the approximate annual percentage rate or APR. And then here's our formula right here. Uh, we do two times N, which is the number of payment periods in a year, times I, which is the total dollar cost of credit or the interest amount, and then we'll divide it by the principal times the total number of payments plus one. So when I plug in our numbers, here's my two, times 12, because we're doing monthly payments, times the $54, which is the finance charge or the interest amount paid or the cost of credit, so multiple terms for the same number, and then uh, in our denominator, our principal was the original $400 borrowed. And since we are doing monthly payments over three years, we get 36. We're taking 3 times 12. So we take 36 plus the 1 from our formula. And when I plug all of this into my calculator, you should get 8.76% as the APR. So the most common method of calculating interest is the simple interest formula. Other methods, such as the simple interest on declining balance and add-on interest, are variations of this formula. So the simple interest is computed on principal only without compounding. It's the dollar cost of borrowing, and here's our formula. Interest equals our principal times the interest rate times time. When we're doing the simple interest on the declining balance, interest is only paid on how much is left of the principal. And then the add-on interest is where interest is calculated on the full amount of principal. Thus, our payment equals the total amount divided by the number of payments to be made. For an add-on interest, if you pay off the loan in one payment, it produces the same annual percentage rate as a simple interest method. However, if you pay in installments, your actual rate of interest will be higher than the stated rate. Interest rates on this type of loan do not decrease as the loan is repaid. So the longer you take to repay that loan, the more interest you'll pay. Let's look at an example. Suppose Scott needs to borrow $6,000. He has the choice of two loans. The first loan charges 6% simple interest with one repayment at the end of three years. The second loan charges 6% simple interest on the declining balance with annual payments. 
So for our first loan, the simple interest, you can see here we only have a single payment, so there's no payment one or two, there's just a single payment at the end of year three, uh, and it's at $7,080. Now recall that our principal borrowed was $6,000, and our total interest paid then is $1,080 and here's our APR. So let's see how it's actually calculated over here on the right. So for our total interest formula, that's the principal times the rate times time. So it takes 6,000 times our 6% or 0 0.06 times three, because we're doing three years, that gives us the 1,080. Right there, our total interest paid. Now to get the APR, we'll plug in our numbers uh, into the formula. Uh, so here's our two from the formula. Note that our n, this is the number of payment periods in a year. However, we're not paying each year, we're paying once in three years. That's why you see this as one over three. So one payment over three years. And then our interest amount of 1,080 is right here. Our principal was 6,000 and our big N, which is the total number of payments. We only have one, so that's why we plug the one here and we add one. And when I plug this into my calculator, I get 5.99% for my APR. Let's look at the second loan. This is the simple interest on declining balance. So you can see that there are three payments uh, at different amounts for first, second, and third. And here's our total for all our payments. In, in the end, we'll pay 6720 Here's our principal borrowed. And so we can see that our total interest paid is uh, 720 But how did we calculate this? So for our first payment, we take the uh, original principal, which is 6,000, and since we're doing three payments, I'm gonna take that principal and divide it by three. The intention is that with each payment, we're paying 2,000 of the principal. So this is 2,000 right here in parentheses, and over here, we're going to add uh, the product of these two numbers. So here's my 6% interest, and here's my principal at the time of my first payment. So um, remember PEMDAS order of operations, we'll multiply this first and then add uh, the payment amount. So that's where we get the 2,360. In other words, 2,000 went to principal and 360 went to the interest in that first payment. Now for our second payment, we're still paying off 2,000 of our principal. Uh, and over here, how much interest are we paying? That's the 6% on the remaining balance. So this is 4,000 because I've already paid 2,000 in my first payment. So we subtract that from the 6,000. That's how I get my 4,000 here. I'll multiply this to get how much interest I owe for the second payment and add it to my 2,000 right here to get a uh, second payment of 2,240. So again, 2,000 went to principal and 240 went to the cost of credit or the interest. For our third payment, same idea. Again, we're gonna pay off the last $2,000 in principal and we have to figure out what the interest was on that last 2,000. So that's why I've got 2,000 here times our 6% and this will be our interest or cost of credit. And so when I take our interest and I add it to the 2,000, my final payment is $2,120. So now in terms of our interest, since I know I was paying 2,000 uh, in principal with each payment, then I really just need to look at the uh, interest amounts, which is the second half of each of our formulas right here. So that's the th 360, 240, and 120, and that gives us 720 for our total interest. Now that I know my I, I can go ahead and plug that into my formula. So two, uh, one payment per year, that's my little n, uh, our interest amount of 720, and then our principal was 6,000. Our big N is how many total payments, there were three, plus one, and when I plug all that into my calculator, I get an APR of 6%. So in this week's module, I also provide uh, an Excel workbook with some helpful tools to help you keep track of your consumer credit. So for instance, when we look at the spreadsheet, it's also a good checklist to see what kinds of debt that you have. So here's automobile, education, personal, or installment loans. So I, for, for our financial institution, I might have a car loan with Lexus Finance. And so um, I've got my account number I'll put in there. Let's say I owe 10,000 on my car and the monthly payment on that is $500. So I'll list all those so I can keep track. And if we scroll down, uh, there's also a place for charge accounts and credit cards. And uh, further down, we all have other loans, uh, home equity, life insurance, and such. So as you plug all of that in, you will have a nice debt payments to income ratio calculated for you at the bottom here. So if you happen to choose the debt elimination assignment uh, that uses PowerPay, this is a, a great tool that goes with that. So you can keep track of it in both places. Uh, and then here, the second tab is the credit card comparison. Uh, this is the other 
assignment that you can choose to do if you don't need to eliminate debt, but rather you need to uh, build your credit, perhaps you want a credit card. Uh, and so I had this table provided in a Word document for the assignment, but if you prefer working in Excel, you can use this tab too. This is a useful tool that lets you pay attention to the key characteristics or aspects of a credit card when you're making a decision on uh, what credit card to sign up for. So if you have any questions, just let me know.